So, let me show you a pseudo random number generator. Oh, by the way, just to give you some examples, you know, we, we said, um, we said dice and coins for this, but that's a bit pedestrian, right? Um, in reality, people who use true random number generators, you can go to, uh, I think it's random.org, I think is a website which does, which does this. Um, it uses far more sophisticated and exotic kinds of physical phenomena to use this. For example, it uses um, radioactive decay. So if you've got like a, a, a radioactive particle and it's sending off, you know, bits of energy, bits of, it's losing bits of mass, right? Um, the quantity at which it does that and the frequency with which it does it is sort of predictable, but it's not really predictable, right? It's, it's quite random. The other cool thing that they use is atmospheric noise. So what they've got is um, they've got some microphone pointed at the sky and it's, it's listening to sound and that's pretty really random. It's about as random as weather, right? Now we can predict weather kind of three days in a row, but as anyone knows, when they've sort of relied on a weather report and it hasn't come true on them, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not super reliable because of the randomness of it. All right, so the pseudo random number generator I'm going to teach you today, it's pretty simple. It's called the LCG or uh, I'm giving you the acronym because the full name is a bit awkward. It's um, the linear congruential generator. LCG is, is a bit better, right? All right. So I'm going to give you the formula um, that, that makes this work, the mathematical mechanism that, that sort of turns the wheels. And um, it's pretty simple, actually, but it's, it's quite powerful. Okay, so here's the way the formula works. And you'll see, hopefully, you'll see why the name is what it is. And so, how does the LCG work? Let me explain it by means of the name, okay? So, what we're going to do is generate random numbers, each called x, right? So, there'll be the first x, the second x, the third x, a whole bunch of them, however many you want, however many random numbers you want, okay? So, this is what we call a um, recursive generator, okay, or a recurrence relation. So you guys know how Fibonacci works, right? So a Fibonacci number, the nth Fibonacci number, is equal to the previous two added together, right? So the nth Fibonacci number is the previous one plus the one before that, and that gives you, you see this, this formula relies on itself. It's self-referential, okay? So that's what recursion means, and this is the same, okay? So if I want to know what the next number is, you take the previous number, you multiply it by some number, you add something, and then you take, you do the remainder thing when we're looking at the modular arithmetic, right? So you can see where the name comes from. Linear comes from the A, right? It's a linear function, right? In a very crude way of thinking about it, this is MX plus B. This is a straight line, okay? But it's congruential because this, uh, this modular arithmetic thing, right? It's the idea of numbers being congruent to one another, okay? So for example, this example I'm going to give is um, the modulus thing is, is 5, okay? So I'm going to divide it by 5. So 2 and 7 in this scheme are congruent, right? They're the same number, really. They're both going to reduce down to 2, okay? So this idea of congruence is really referring to the fact that it's using modular arithmetic. So you need some conditions. You've got these three numbers here. They've all got to be less than whatever you're going to take the modulus of, okay? All the values have to be positive integers. That's fine. X naught, that's a subscript, not an index, okay? Is the seed number. It's what you start with. It's your starting point, okay? So here are our, our building blocks. Here's an example, okay? I'm going to start with one as my seed number, and then I just kind of pick some numbers at random. I picked them all very small so that we can follow the maths, but just like with prime numbers, right? This whole process gets more and more effective the larger our numbers are, all right? So let's give this a go. Let's start crunching through it, okay? We've got our first random number here. Well, it's not really random. We chose it, okay? So how do we work out the next one? X1, what's it going to be equal to? Well, you go A times X0, the previous one. So that's going to be 2 times 1. You're going to add this constant, see if it's constant, and then you're going to go mod 5. So far so good? So let's work this out. 2 plus 3 is 5. So this is 5 mod 5. So to do this mod bit, you say, well, what's the remainder after I divide by 5? And the answer is 0. Good. 
So x1, our first real random number, is 0. Now, how do we get the next one? x2. Okay, you repeat the process. We can do this probably be a bit quicker, can't we? Okay, 2 times 0 plus 3 is 3. And when you take mod 5, well, I'm still under 5, aren't I? So this is just going to be 3. Alright, just wait. You, you, we knew it was going to have these properties. Okay? If what's going to matter is the numbers that come at the end. Now, have a look at x3. Okay, what's going to happen? I'm going to go 2 times, two times 3, which is 6, plus 3 which is 9. So I've got to go 9 mod 5, which is 4. Okay, so now we're 4. And we'll do the fourth one. Okay. 4 times 2, which is 8, plus 3, that's 11, mod 5. Now I take the remainder after I divide by 5 as many times as I can. I divide by 5 once, or you take away 5, you get 6. You can take it away again. Now I've got 1. Okay, now, what has happened? I've returned to 1, which was my seed number here, okay? So you can see why it's periodic, okay? Now, by the way, semi-coincidentally, I hit the, the, the period of, of 5 after going to the fourth number. Why was it the fourth number, do you think? Where, where, why did I hit it after, like, 7 or 8 or 9? Can you see... This is kind of like my limiting factor, right? Because no matter what I number I get out here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. I can't get anything higher because I'm going to go mod 5 on whatever result I get, right? So I'm circling around 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 in some kind of order. Now, do have a look at the order. What number, what order have we ended up with? We've got 1, 0, uh, hold on, 3, and then 4. So I actually skipped out on 2. Starting at 1, I'll never get 2 out of this because now that I'm, I've got to 4, I'll get back to 1. So I'll go 1, 0, 3, 4, 1, 0, 3, 4. And this is, like, there's some randomness to this, right? Like, you could have come up with a random series of numbers and this could have been it, okay? So it has that uniform distribution nature to it, okay? But it has these problems. Uh, you can see now, this is, what we, this is what we did, right? We just had the same numbers. We had uh, multiplied by 2, adding 3, and then taking a modulus of 5. Here's my, I put it in red because this is my seed number. This is what I started with. What you've got here are, what are the prime, which prime number am I up to? First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, etc. And sure enough, here are the same results that we just got. 1, 0, 3, 4. 1, 0, 3, 4, no, 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 no. So I want to show you, well, if I graph those, okay, you can clearly see the periodic nature of what's happening, right? There it is. 1, 0, 3, 4. 1, 0, 3, 4, and it's happening over and over again. Now, the great thing about doing this um, by computer is that I can adjust these dynamically, right? Rather than crunch through all the numbers, it would take us forever, okay? So, for instance, if I change, let's just change a single number, okay? Let's just change the modulus, what we're dividing by, find the remainder. So, if I change it to 6, okay, what do you get? Now, what happens? Hmm, this is worse than what we had before. I wonder if you can work out why. Look, I'm only going 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 5, and I keep flopping back and forth. Hmm. Doesn't look good. Well, let's keep going. Let's try a number like seven. Ooh, seven's a bit more useful. It's a bit more useful. I wonder if you think, why is seven a more useful number than six? I'll keep going. Let's try eight. Eight's a, eight's a bad one. What happened to eight? I got to eight, right? I hit five, and then what happens? I go five times two, which is ten. <laughs> Then I add 3, which is 13, and then I take away 8, which lands me back on 5. five. So you kind of, well, it's a bad <laughs> option, bad choice, right? Let's go to 9. Okay, ooh! Oh, yeah. Now I'm starting to get something more interesting, okay? Now as the number gets bigger, you can see that these numbers are getting bigger because I've got more numbers to choose from. I can go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 before I have to come back to an original number. So that's looking better. What if I go 10? What if I go 11? Ooh. Oh. Now just, hold on, let me undo that again. I just changed a single number and I only changed it by one. Tens, okay. But 11 is much better. Why would 11 be better, so much better, than 10? I got 12. Oh. <laughs> okay, think about this. 10, okay. 11, good. 12, awful. 
Why is 12 so bad? It's got so many factors. It's got so many factors. Right? Not only is it not prime, it's very, very not prime. <laughs> okay? So you see you see how prime numbers are important, right? I'm going to keep going. Let's, uh, let's skip forward a little bit. A little bit. I'm going to go up to 100. And have a look at 100. Oh. Now, remember I said we're playing with pretty small numbers. For a computer, 100 is still a very small number. But it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Right? Now watch what happens. If I just go up, just go up 1. 101. It's very different, isn't it? And if I go up again. Now you see what we talk about when we say random. Right? Every time I go up, you're getting quite drastically different numbers. By the way, you might have noticed as I went through, I'll undo them and you can see them in a row. Even though this part seems to be changing quite a lot, this part doesn't. Watch it again. Go back. One, two, three. Why is that bit so consistent? Oh, no, because the, the, the numbers are getting slowly up to the original. Number. Good. Okay, so remember, this is the linear congruential generator, right? So this thing over here is kind of mimicking what a linear function is doing. It's, I know it doesn't look like it because there's, <laughs> there's that adding of a constant, right? But it's, it's, it's growing a linear rate until it hits somewhere where when you multiply the next one, it goes over the threshold, okay? And the modulus kind of kicks in, right? And then it starts to get really interesting. Yep. Wait, so it's constrained with the factors or how close it is to a prime number? Bit of both. Okay. Bit of both. Because okay. 100 has a lot of factors. As you can see, right, it's not complete, it's not really random. I mean, if you knew these numbers, you'd get exactly the same thing out. But it's random enough. Right? If I gave you, look at these, look at these numbers. If I gave you this list of numbers, you didn't see the graph, okay? 1, 5, 13, 29, 61. If we played that kind of game where it's like, you know, you get one of these quizzes, guess the next number in the sequence, right? You're gonna be like, ooh, what's the difference there, difference there? And then it's gonna be like 51 to 4? What just happened, you know? So it has enough randomness to it to actually use. Does that make sense? Can you put it in a number or like a pile? It's going to be a bit tricky when you think about modules and like, well, you know, let's, let's, I don't know, let's just see what happens. Let's put it in uh, 3.141592. No, no, you can put the symbol in. You can put the symbol in. in the What's happening there? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> so there you go. Random number generators, they're kind of like your last piece of the puzzle when it comes to cryptography.